Hey everyone, welcome to another installment of Harry Potter Theory. In this video, we're going to be discussing both Wizardkind and Humankind, with the former of course being a subset of the latter. First, we'll be taking a look at the history of Humankind and the first instances of Witches and Wizards, and then we will be taking a look at the physiological differences between a regular human and a magical being. While the original ancestors of humans were thought to have first existed about 6 million years ago, the more modern form of humans, the ones that we're accustomed to, have only been around for 200,000 years or so. The first link to humanity began with a primate group called Ardipothecus, a group based out of Africa that were revolutionary in that they were the first group to begin the path of walking upright, as we do now. The Ardipothecus group originated over 6 million years ago, and this group was of particular importance to the development of humanity, as their ability to walk upright allowed for free use of the hands. With their hands free, it allowed pre-humans to develop further, and begin to focus on using their hands for other purposes. The next group of pre-humans that rose to prominence were the Australopithecus group, which are thought to have first existed sometime between 2 and 4 million years ago. The Australopithecus were notable in that, in addition to walking, they were also able to climb trees, Next came the Paranthropus, thought to have first existed sometime between 2 and 3 million years ago, which can be most notably distinguished by its enlarged teeth, which allowed for a broader diet. As you can see, as time passed, these pre-humans developed more and more of the traits that we see in more modern day humans. However, it wasn't until just over 2 million years ago that the Homo group, the group which contains our own species, Homo sapiens, first arose. The Homo group can be most notably distinguished from the other groups by their bigger brains, tool making, and ability to expand their territory, reaching far beyond the confines of Africa. Homo sapiens, which we are, didn't pop up until 200,000 years ago, and were particularly resilient in that they were able to survive and thrive despite climate change. Over the course of the last 200,000 years, humans have continued to develop, evolve, and adapt and I think that Wizardkind, which is of course a subset of humankind and not an entirely different species altogether, is just another one of these natural developments, achieving, in some ways, a newer and more advanced form of humanity. But when did Wizardkind enter the mix? At what point in history did witches and wizards first come to prominence, or show signs of life? Unfortunately, in the Harry Potter universe at least, the origins of Wizardkind are unknown, or undefined, However, we do have some information about the first witches and wizards to have appeared in certain parts of the world. The first known member of Wizardkind to exist in Europe was a witch named Cleanna, who first presided there sometime in the Middle Ages. She was an animagus with the ability to turn into a seabird, and she actually has her own chocolate frog card. While the Middle Ages were a long long time ago, the period between the 5th and 15th century, I would have still expected the first member of European Wizardkind to have popped up much sooner. However, while Klienna was the first to appear in Europe, there is one known wizard that lived much sooner than her in another part of the world. The first known wizard across all continents was a wizard by the name of Yayamanek, who hailed from Egypt as far back as 2600 BC. There is little to no information available on Yayamanek, other than where he was from and the period in which he lived, but I do wonder if Wizardkind went back further than that or if he was truly the first. The origins of magic are still unclear to this day. No one knows whether the inception of Wizardkind was born from humans randomly discovering their magical abilities, or if it was created in some form, by way of pact, ritual, or potion. I find the first theory more intriguing, however, as it aligns with the concept of Muggleborns and how they would first develop their magical abilities. So, the first known magical being didn't appear until 2600 BC. However, Members of Wizardkind are of course a kind of subspecies of human, meaning they possess many of the same physical characteristics. However, in subtle, perhaps non-visual ways, they also differ physiologically to some extent. One of the largest ways that Wizardkind differs from humankind is life expectancy. According to a figure reported by the Ministry of Divine Health, the average wizarding life expectancy was reported at an average of 137 and 3 quarter years old. Whether that's down to purely their physiology is up for us to decide, but they do live considerably longer than their human counterparts. If they live to 137 and 3 quarter years old on average, this means that members of Wizardkind live for 57% longer than members of Humankind, who cap out at 79. 
I suspect that one of the largest reasons for this is a subtle difference in their physiology that renders them less susceptible to common diseases, illnesses, and sicknesses. Witches and wizards also have access to better medicines and medical remedies. This means that, in addition to their already superior physiology, they are more effectively able to treat a wide variety of illnesses and conditions. Wizarding medicine is particularly advanced, and where a human may suffer from a potentially fatal bone break, their wizard counterparts would be able to take advantage of a potion like Skelligro, which either mends broken bones or regrows them entirely. A broken bone can be fixed in one night, where a human may require a cast along with months of physical therapy. This is just a prime example of how much more advanced wizarding medicine is, and one reason why they may be able to live for so much longer than their human counterparts. Unsurprisingly, witches and wizards also differ from humans in the way that they might react to being attacked by a magical creature. However, one thing that needs to be addressed is that, just as wizardkind is a subset of humankind, there are also subsets of wizardkind itself. Witches and wizards that are born with unique traits or abilities uncommon to the majority. There are quite a few subspecies or subtypes of wizards. Let's take a look. The first subtype of wizardkind, seers. Witches and wizards who are born with the ability to see or predict future events. Utilizing objects like crystal balls and tarot cards, seers are able to further tap into their abilities and gain additional insights into the events of the future. The next subtype of wizardkind, metamorph magi. Witches and wizards who are born with the ability to change their physical appearance at will. Among other physical attributes, metamorph magi are able to change their noses, eyes, hair color, and more. The next subtype of wizardkind is witches and wizards who are born with the ability to speak parcel tongue. These members of wizardkind are known as parcel mouths, and the ability is thought to be a hereditary trait passed on through descendants of Hogwarts founder Salazar Slytherin. The next subtype of wizardkind are maledictuses, witches who are born carrying a blood curse that leads to their eventual and inevitable transformation into some sort of beast. The maledictus curse is exclusive to women, and the most notable example of this is Nagini, Voldemort's trusty sidekick that starts off as a quiet, gentle woman and slowly turns into a giant snake over the course of her life. Regardless of when the family was first cursed, once in the bloodline, the maledictus curse will continue to persist and is passed on from generation to generation by mother to daughter. The final subtype of wizard kind are half Vila, witches who have one wizard parent and one Vila parent. Vila are semi-human magical beings who, in their regular form, are beautiful women with white gold hair and glowing skin. However, when angry, the form of a Vila changes dramatically, as their faces begin to elongate into sharp, cruel-beaked bird heads with long, scaly wings that burst from their shoulders. The traits of a Vila are thought to be hereditary, which is why, if they have a daughter with a wizard, the daughter will often inherit the beauty, charm, and seduction of their Vila parent. Though the aforementioned subtypes of wizard kind paint a good picture of the types of witches and wizards that can exist as a result of hereditary, born traits, it's also worth mentioning that there are also many witches and wizards that have been able to dramatically change their appearance, abilities, etc. through the use of magic and learned traits. A few examples of these witches and wizards include Animegai, who garner the ability to transform into some kind of animal, Legilimens, who gain the ability to read minds, and even Obscurials, witches and wizards who, due to being raised in an environment where their magic is viewed negatively, develop an Obscurus, a dark parasitic force that is the result of their magic being suppressed and tainted by a negative emotion. And that's it for this video. It turns out the average member of Wizardkind isn't all that different from the average member of Humankind. What did you guys learn in this video? What surprised you? Let me know down in the comment section below. Until next time, you're a wizard, Harry.